we have with us mr sasi kumar d manager operations indomem who will be talking regarding effects of gas atomized powder warm greetings to all the panelists co participants organizers and the other members who are actively involved for the uh, making this adp manufacturing industrial conference one as a successful event uh, we indomem <laughs> really happy to participate for this wonderful initiatives we thank objective 5 for giving this wonderful opportunity to share our our part of experience in additive manufacturing operation i represent uh, a company called indomim they are the leader in making metal injection molding components and uh, i am basically taking care of the gas atomization process facility i have the experience of 15 years of metal powders as well as ceramic powder manufacturing in various industries in today's topic we talk we are going to discuss about the gas atomized powder properties versus how it affects on the printing parameters the crux of this presentation will be how the powder property influence in improving the printing process capability unlike not improving the process parameters so how the process capability of the printing can be improved if the powder has a consistency properties uh, here i just covered the key content of the presentation which we are going to see in the coming slides sorting with the various powder techniques to how the powder is qualified and what are the powders available with us for the additive manufacturing industries a brief introduction about our organization before uh, addressing the core content we indomim are well known for the metal injection molding process we are the one of the leading manufacturer of mim components The MIM process is a branch of powder metallurgy where the metal powders is mixed with binders injected to the molds and get us a green product, which again debinded and and sintered to get the final product. So, what is the need of this process? Maybe out of these very complex and large volume, then MIM come into the picture. So, we have manufacturing location three in India, two in Bangalore, one in Andhra, in Tripoli precisely, and other two operation in US. So, our manufacturing spectrum covers the metal injection molding. investment casting powder production and directional solidified process like to manufacture single crystal turbine plates and vacuum investment casting with epx to microstructure so as you see that our manufacturing spectrum all cover all the niche technology in this line we set up india's first commercial scale hot gas atomizer facility in 2016 now we go to the presentation you may have the various uh, powder production techniques available so just i summarize those different techniques in five different columns so each technique has its own way in order to achieve the powder properties so it depends on the powder properties in the sense particle size distribution shape and surface area and even the melting point of the material the different technologies has been evolved if you see that the molly and tungsten is impossible to make by melting and atomization process because of its melting point we should have to go for a different technique like pyrolysis wherever the higher the melting point comes pyrolysis or electro deposition or reduction techniques will come into the picture wherever the large volume is required then obviously atomization process will come into the picture where the cost is the factor you have to address on the cost and mechanical process process also will come into the uh, picture so there is the combination of powder process and the process uh, competitiveness based on that the process will be selected our area of interest is gas atomization process because the powder made out of gas atomization technology is widely used for the additive manufacturing applications there are, there are many techniques are available in gas atomization process itself i chosen two process one is vacuum induction melting with gas atomization another one is electro induction melting or the plasma melting with gas atomization process i just would like to compare the key differences between these two process then the vacuum induction melting like the conventional induction melting the melting happens in a ceramic crucible which carries a liquid metal it comes happens in the induction melting furnaces whereas in the b vacuum induction melting <coughs> the liquid metal is folded in a ceramic crucible generally alumina based crucible used to carry whereas we go for the electrode or plasma melting process there will be no reservoir to hold the liquid metal have the, the electrodes whatever the powder you want to make that alloy itself became a bar stock it be a feed stock of a wire or a rod of high purity will be used and it will be melted by either induction process or by the plasma and it will be atomized since here the ceramic crucible is available in the viva process we call vacuum induction gas atomization viva process there are possibility of traces of some ceramic inclusions to overcome such a traces this technique is evolved 
and again the setting of the process parameters the automation process parameters are comparatively easier in the electrode melting process again all come up with their uh, cost if you go for the in, in terms of cost point of view you could see that the vega process is economically competitive comparing to the electrode process wherever you need a high pure material for a very very sensitive and critical application where the electrode melting process is needed the process what we follow here is vacuum induction melting gas atomization process vega it is widely adapted so 90 90% of the powder manufacturing in the globe will follow this process whereas the electrode or the plasma melting usually adapted for the titanium powder very reactive materials will be used for uh, that process in this we see the process flow the very important process is selection of raw material you may aware that in vacuum melting process the melting everything happens in a closed chamber so there is a no possibility for us to upgrade the material quality it has to be controlled from the raw material side so the chemistry chemical composition and the trace elements and any of the gaseous content all must be controlled in the raw material that is the most important aspect of this process there is a melting process it happens in the vacuum or it may also happen in the protective atmosphere either nitrogen or organ depends on the product wise we will select it next come to the atomization which is the key process the process of atomization is uh, this integration of a, a thin stream of liquid metal it, it somewhere between 3 to 6 mm diameter liquid stream will be disintegrated by the high pressure gas at a pressure of 30 to 60 bar depends on the product it varies the process what we use hot gas here the temperature of the gas varies from 100 to 400 degrees celsius so obviously to use a hot gas you are not allowing the powder to cool very fast if the faster is the cooling then you we will absorb a uh, irregular shape so sphericity will come down so in order to bring down the cooling we go for the hot gas it enhances the formation of more spherical powder then though these uh, atomization process give you a particle size distribution which follows usually a gaussian or a normal distribution curve but the particle size vary from 1 microns to 150 microns both at the tails which may not be required for any of the applications so classification plays a significant role to classify the powder to different fractions according to the application that's most important as far as cleaning is required then come to the blending unlike mixing where in mixing we add different chemical constituents material to bring the homogeneity here the idea is because the melting batch size is 250 kg this is an example of ours is 250 kilograms each batch have different size distribution so in order to that's the idea of blending then we go for the quality testing we have the well established indoor testing facility and if the powder is unattended to the atmosphere environmental condition then there are chances of moisture pickup on the formation of uh, hydroxide layer formation which uh, may affect the flow properties now on base of uh, powder characteristics we widely classified all man powder manufacturing techniques you can see the particle size distribution and particle shape is taken for this study you could see that very fine powder is needed for the metal injection molding and the binder jet process whereas a moderate size somewhere between 15 to 50 microns for the lace powder bit laser sintering Whereas the EBM and DED needed some 50 to 150 microns. Anything beyond that can be used for the conventional presence in the process. Most of the, almost all of the additive manufacturing techniques prefers a spherical powder. Even some of the powder manufacturing techniques, even uh, sorry, powder processing aeration techniques, what you see is the size distribution of the powder. So nothing but the standard deviation of the powder spread. We could observe here all the additive manufacturing techniques prefer a narrow size distribution. This is one factor which limits the generation of AM uh, generation of the AM grade powder. Suppose if I produce a MIM powder uh, for melting of 100 kg, I can achieve 70 kg of MIM powder. Whereas if I do for uh, additive manufacturing, it will hardly between 30 to 40 kg. So that's the one factor which limits the generation of AM grade powder. We subsequently adding up the cost of the process. Uh, the few challenges what the AM industry would face. Is addressed in the four category of cost of the overall product realization. It comprises of powder, machine, product running cost, including all, and lack of experience. Un unless the other conventional technique like melting, welding, casting, other joining process, the availability of talents for this process is comparatively less. But though there's a lot of uh, people are coming up with a lot of experience, knowledge sharings are happening like this, but comparing to other process, 
the experience levels are is, is lesser. Then come to the free stock, which we are going to talk in detail. There are the prime concerns the availability of material other than the very few standard alloys. This in complex design. Though this technique is meant for addressing a complex design, but still it has its own limitation to address ultra or very, very high complex designs. These are the areas broadly this industries or the research team are working on that area how to simplify or how to enhance to make this process conventionally available anywhere. We could observe that is happening very much uh, globally as well as in India. As a powder supplier, I can uh, measure how the industry uh, our Indian industries are adapting this process. Uh, give an example that we have been selling this AM grade powder since 2017. In 2017, we only sell 1 to 1.5 tons of powder per year. Today, the powder consumption is 8 to 9 tons of powder. That indicates how much the process is adapted by various users. Then we come to the core area of feedstock, which we are going to address in the coming slide. Mainly, how the powder influence on the print parameters. Again, the supply variation in the powders, how to control the supply variations and powder recyclability here. So only the, as a uh, powder manufacturer or as well as the powder users, we establish certain process how to recycle the process in the printing after the printing. If you'd like to share our experience, it may be useful to some of you who are not having a better idea of the powder recycling. It definitely be a useful information. Come to the powder properties. So the powder usually tested, measured, and qualified, certified based on these properties. If you divide these properties into primary and secondary, obviously by the name, the secondary is all depending upon the primary characteristics. The primary characteristics varies, it influences on the secondary characteristics. As a powder manufacturer, our process design all focus in terms of melting and atomization parameters, all focus how to achieve the primary characteristics in a consistent manner. That's what we focus on. Uh, coming to the chemistry, yes, there is a broader guideline here there because we can select the chemistry as per any other standard, either the ASC standard or European standard or equal to any other standard. It's very clear for the chemical composition. But the problem is most of the international standards never discuss about the trace elements. For an example, I take it 316L. 316L, 316L AIS standard never talks about the presence of copper and cobalt. But in the market, Without these trace elements, the materials are not available. Or if it is available, that price will be three times higher than the regular materials. So in that case, it is essential to specify what are the unavoidable trace elements and what are the limits are permitted. See, if you have a higher level of copper, obviously the melting point of the copper is quite low. It can lead kind of segregation, micro segregation in the system. Right? So it's very much important to define the trace elements. Again, the interstitial elements, third one. So I'm just I'm, um, uh, what I'm referring here is a gaseous content primarily the oxygen and nitrogen content. Interesting fact is the yield strength of the material is almost three times higher than the conventional process. Even the role of force is believed to be the better mechanical believed to be given the better mechanical properties. But the additive manufacturing giving the values much better than the conventional process. Interestingly without dropping the percentage of elongation. Again here the various theory is coming for why the yield strength is going up. One other uh, theory says that the refinement of microstructure could be the reasons or the orientation of the grinds. Even there are micro aligning of the elements of chromium and moly settling down on the grind boundary and improving the grind boundary strengthening. There are various theory have been evolved to uh, quantify the increase of yield strength in these properties. So that's what uh, uh, primarily how do we uh, cover how the powders, uh, what we, how do we qualify uh, before we are clearing the product for the RDB manufacturing application and each the, the, the nuances of uh, properties, how it impacts and the printing consistency. Let me just quickly uh, touch upon our capabilities, what Indoem has. So we have a 600 tons of melting capacity. So we dedicated close to 100 tons for the additive manufacturing applications. So though we have 600 tons of melting capacity, but the final product we can produce close to 300 tons of powders, either for MIM plus additive manufacturing, additive manufacturing grade. Combined together, we produce close to 300 tons of powder per annum. Our machine is capable to manufacture all variants of stainless steel, blue steel, ferrolize, other alloy steels, and nickel and cobalt super alloy powders. And some of the powders what we produced and uh, what we have been supplying for the additive manufacturing segments are listed out here. We almost produce all, we are supplying all variants of stainless steel powders. Even uh, we also developed H13 M2D2 for the alloy and tool steels segment. These are the alloys for the Incodal. We have the basic standard alloy for 1078, 65, and 918, 18A. Also, we have done it. Similarly, we have, we have the product in 
โอบอลเดสเชลอยส่วนอีกอย่างหนึ่งคือเราไม่ได้ลิมิตติ้งของพาวเดอร์สเปกตรัมต่อไอโรไอส์ว่าที่เราเมนชั่นแต่ความสำคัญของเอเมอร์จิงมาร์เก็ตติ้งและเอเวอร์กรีนมาร์เก็ตติ้งส่วนใหญ่ของพลังงานอินดัสทรีของอีวีเวกิลส์ก็จะเป็นเอเมอร์จิงมาร์เก็ตติ้งที่ถูกต้องเดี๋ยวเฟโรโคบอลต่อไอเฟโรนิกลอยส์ส่วนนี้เราก็ยังเอ็กซ์พอร์ตนั่นซึ่งเหมาะสมกับไฮเทมเปอร์เรชั่นแอปพลิเคชันแอร์คราฟต์อินดัสทรีตัวกรอทุกวันก็จะมีอยู่แล้วใช่ไหมแล้วก็ยังมีการเปลี่ยนแปลงที่เกิดขึ้นในยุคใหม่ของแอปพลิเคชันแล้วก็ยังมีการเปลี่ยนแปลง Have all the salient features to go for the highest level of purity. So again, the evergreen industry, like pharma, food, and chemical fertilizer industry, where the material consumptions are quite large because of rate of corrosion involved there, and still the EM segments are not addressed their demands. Recently, that the oil and gas industries or there's a good level of um, EM approach has been adapted in the segment, but still the fertilizer industry, where the phosphoric acid impact in terms of and so it does. It not been those those there the consumption are quite large where the AM segments are not well addressed. So for those alloys, even the has has by C two seven six is one of the prime alloy that can can address a severe corrosion environment. So so we are also aiming to develop such a exotic alloys to address a special application. So we closely work with all uh, printers uh, users or, or service providers to map their requirement, understand the volumes based on that. Uh, that's input we. We we track to develop all these new products because all these things are in our pipeline. So in the coming years, one by one grades will be coming into the picture. In addition to that, yes. In addition to that, we also uh, we we are also getting certified our powders by Semilac. Now, Semilac is the part of the DRDO. So they are the authorities who certify the products for air worthiness quality. Anything to supply for the different segments. So we are half through to qualify our powders for the air worthiness certification. Probably by end of the month, we'll be having one or two products for the air worthiness certification. In fact, we are the one in the global. So none of the global manufacturer has been certified by the air worthiness certification product. So we are the, the first initiative we have taken with help of uh, Semilac and one of the service provider in Bangalore. Uh, we take we took these initiatives. So <clears throat> so our powder will be qualified for the aircraft different aircraft industry very soon. So this is all our powder journey. So here uh, we start our humble beginning in December 2016. That's the first our atomizer of 300 tons per annum capacity has been installed, and come to the commercialized production in February, subsequently July for the main process. Uh, sorry, the July is for the additive manufacturing. It's not updated. It's uh, additive manufacturing. Sort of the commercial product has been supplied from the July on 2017 onwards. And we are enhancing our production capacity. We have placed order for second atom atomizer in December 2020. In March 21, so apart from the gas atomization, we are also venturing into the carbonyl iron powder, the pyrolysis process, to produce the iron powder by the carbonyl process with a capacity of 2,000 tons per annum. This already uh, ground work has been laid. All this basic ground level work has been done. So the May 2022, by the time our second atomizer will be reaching Bangalore, so that our capacity production capacity will be 600 tons. At the same time, we have. We are also in the discussion to place one more atomizer. So by end of next year, we will be having the powder capacity of thousand tons of powder, and we'd like to establish ourselves a, a a global powder manufacturer with a consistent and sustainable in a sustainable manner. So that's what the agenda. So we want to be come into this domain in a bigger way. So our tagline is the complexity simplified. So that's what we do. What are the If you do the complex problem, we simplify it and give the solution to our customers. Here, there are various bullet points out there. I just would like to highlight the uh, the two key aspects which drive us to be successful in this segment is our flexibility to product customization. We are always open to customization. If you want to combine three one six and three two one, you find a new product. Definitely, we are there to support. And similarly, for new product development, if your customer is asking some new products, okay, so the service providers, uh, customers asking for new product, definitely we are there to. Support as long as the volumes are met, and again our solutions are very competitive, and the turnaround time is very short. Very short, even for any standard alloys, we will be providing in a week or ten days time. So integrated value chain. There is a manufacturing spectrum of Indomie. So as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, we are into the various manufacturing segment, and in fact we are also into the metal binder jet three D printing. There is our facility in US San Antonio. Have a binder jet printing process. We are evolving with the parameters. We are collaborating one of the leading machine manufacturer and uh, arriving the printing parameters in the soon and the later stage of 2021. We will be releasing the product out of uh, binded process. 
and certification all our manufacturing process based on the process line it will be certified by any one of the quality management system with aerospace segment will go for the AS standard or uh, medical will go for 13485 the relevant standard will be will be used for all the manufacturing line and even we take of utmost care for this environmental and safety for uh, even we take care of the uh, energy efficiency so so we have to the ult ultimate response for all these other aspects also so one of the other advantage of indomie though we have manufacturing presence in india and i mean us but our sales office covered all the major five continents so we are easy we are on the call away for to reach the any of our customers is one of the big advantage of indomie to serve all their customers finally i thank you to uh, all the participants for the patient listening i think a uh, few of my slides have been helpful for you for understanding of the process i hope uh, it gives some meaningful insights to you all one second i thank uh, objectify and the team for giving this opportunity for your presentation thank you all thank you for the amazing session hope you have learned a lot from this session 